How do you know which portions of our amateur radio bands are allocated for which modes? What would cause a spike in SWR on a DX Commander antenna? And where should you put your antenna analyzer when analyzing an antenna? This time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike, call sign K at MRD. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, K at MRD at iCloud.com. We've got some great questions today, so let's dive right in. This first viewer asks, new to HF and just got my general end of summer 2023. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. After seeing videos like yours on POTA, I got a band plan PDF from the ARRL so I can stay in my correct frequency allocation. That's important to do. But I keep hearing things like the FM portion of the band. How do you know what or when to use FM, AM, sideband, etc., and what parts of the band to use them on, or what the application is of a particular mode? I'm using a G90, and there are many mode options and have been staying on upper sideband or lower sideband looking for guidance. Thank you, Kevin. KC8TGJ. Thanks, Kevin, for writing in. Well, uh, it can be a little daunting uh, looking at all of the the band allocations that we have and when and where to use them. And there's a couple resources that we can take a look at. ARL's one, uh, but there's one better that might be helpful. So let's hop on the internet machine and check that out. So here's the ARRL US amateur radio band plan that he's talking about. And most of us are familiar with this. But this only gives like what the bands are and a little bit of information. So like 40 meters here, we can see in red, this is Viridian data and green, we have phone and image. And then down here, novices and techs can use CW in this part. But you know, when we get to like two meters, well, we have 144 to 148, here's a little bit of CW, but what is all the rest of the stuff? It's, it's kind of incomplete. So to answer your first question, what mode or application is a portion of it going to be on? So if you're generally uh, CW, you can use anywhere, everywhere, all the time. CW is allowed everywhere. So if you're doing Morse code, uh, typically you're going to find Morse code and data modes towards the bottom of any particular band. That's just generally where it happens. Could you do Morse code? At the higher end of the frequency, absolutely. That's just not where the Morris code guys hang out. It's always kind of towards the, the lower portion. Same thing with, with data modes. With phone or voice talking into a microphone, those are generally going to be towards the, I say loosely, higher portion, uh, but not always. Depending on single sideband, uh, on some of the bands, typically you'll see single sideband kind of towards the lower portion, just above the CW and data. And then the FM portions are kind of usually towards the top, but not always. And we'll make more sense of that. But that's kind of how you can know when and where to use upper sideband and lower sideband. Upper sideband, 30 meters and higher. So or lower if you're talking meters. So 30 meters. 20 meters, 17, 15, 12, 10, 6. If you're using sideband, it's pretty much always going to be upper sideband. Data modes are always upper sideband. And 40 meters and higher, so 40 through 160 meters, or, or what is it, 2,200 meters now, uh, we're going to use lower sideband for voice contact. So that's just kind of the gentleman's agreement that we use. Can you use lower sideband on like 6 meters if you want? Yes, but you're not going to hear many people because everybody's using upper sideband. So that's how to do that. But now, how do we dive in even deeper and look at where specifically is that FM portion? Let's take a look. So if we go to Google and we Google U.S. Amateur Radio Band Plan, we scroll down a bit. We see Wikipedia. We get ARL. But this ICOM America one in particular, if we click on that, that's going to bring up this page. And let's click on this right here. And that's going to bring up this band plan. I think ICOM does a really good job with this. Here they actually break down what portions of which band is for what. And here everything's color coded. So let's just let's pick on two meters. So here at the bottom, we can see we've got CW here in kind of this reddish color. Moving up a little bit, we see uh, no FM, SSB weak signal here in green. And then in blue, we've got satellites, then in orange here, these are our FM repeaters. Moving up a little bit here, we've got the digital portion as well as FM simplex. Then we've got some more repeaters. 
uh, some more uh, satellite, more repeaters, more simplex, and it kind of breaks it down there. So this does a lot better job. So now let's go down to 10 meters and look at that. It's a big band and we use a lot of sideband, but we also use FM. Um, it's a really cool band. So here between 28 to 28.3, we can see we've got CW, CW and also this is kind of where the digital stuff hangs out. But now we also have uh, an FM portion from 29.6 to 29.7. This is where you're going to get like your repeaters and things like that. So this does a lot better job of breaking it down. And then here you, this star means this is where the technicians can hang out. So you have privileges from 28.3 to 28.5 on phone. And you can also use uh, CW and data down here too. So take a look at this ICOM one. This I'm not going to go through everything, but it just does a lot better. Like here they're saying DX window on 80 and 75 meters. 60 meters, they actually give the USB tuning frequency and the data channel center. So that's nice. And, you know, like this is the DX channel, apparently. I don't get on 60 meters, so I don't know much. But uh, again, this does a lot better job at kind of deciphering our band plans than the ARRL one does. So I hope that answers your question. Welcome to HF and congratulations on your general. And thanks for writing in. Next, we've got a peculiar situation about a DX Commander. This gentleman says, even though it's made for portable, I have my DX Commander Expedition set up as my main antenna for my shack. That's great. My SWR on, our, my SWR on all bands is between 1.1 to 1.5 to 1 and is hooked up to an MFJ 939B tuner as well. However, there are times that my SWR in 20 meters will skyrocket. Even with the tuner, it will show greater than 25 to 1 and is unusable. Any idea what could be causing my issue? Oh, boy. Um, why are you using an antenna tuner on a resident antenna <laughs> is my first question. But um, I have noticed uh, when I've taken my DX Commander Expedition out, particularly on like long weekends like field day and such, I will see the SWR change quite a bit in the wind, okay? Do a little wind dance here. Uh, so I'm wondering, that that would be the first thing that I would think of. And being that you're using the Expedition, the mast isn't as stiff as some of the other antennas. So possibly just guying it more, you know, lower, medium, high to kind of alleviate that, I would suspect might be one solution. Another thing I would check would be your coax. You could have an intermittent short in there, and uh, it just likes to wreak havoc periodically. Um, take the tuner out of line, see if that happens. It could be something internal with the tuner. I would doubt it, but it could be. I've had nothing but great luck with my MFJ tuners, but stuff happens. Um, you, If it's just 20 meters, though, you may want to just check that 20 meter element is the connection dirty is it is it intermittently uh not connecting you know is it is it starting to uh, are there any weather issues where the wire physically connects to the 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 base plate of the antenna you know get a wire brush or a dremel and and scrape off get new metal is the wire in good condition? Has the mast collapsed? Is the has the wire gotten pinched? That's happened to me because I'm too stubborn to put the uh, the hose clamps on it because I always just use it for portable for a few hours. Um, so I have had the mast collapse down on me, and actually have uh, broken a couple of the elements that I've had to remake the wires. So <laughs> there's a lot of possibilities there. Um, you kind of just have to start diagnosing it one thing at a time um, and, and, and go from there. So I, I can't really give you a definitive answer, but uh, if it's only happening when it's windy, I would say it's that and guy it. Otherwise, uh, just take it one thing at a time. Start with the coax. Go look at the, look at the connector on the DX Commander. Uh, is, is the SO239 connected properly to the... Uh, the base plate there, I, there's a myriad of reasons without being there. I, all I can do is guess, but uh, those are some, some things to troubleshoot for. So hopefully it's an easy fix. I mean, it's there's, it's not a complicated antenna, so it shouldn't be uh, uh, that, that difficult to diagnose or that expensive to fix. So hopefully that gives you 
some bit of answer there, but that's about all I could tell you. But thanks for writing in. Guys, if you have any solutions, any any advice, uh, something I may have missed, which there's probably a lot, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below so we can all uh, share our ideas together. So thanks for writing in. And lastly, we've got something that will probably cause a debate. <laughs> But that's good. This isn't really that polarizing of an issue. But uh, this viewer is asking, hello, Mike. Enjoy the YouTube videos. Here's a question that's been discussed, debated, but no clear, concise answer yet. OK, so you're checking SWR. Can you unscrew the coax at your radio and connect your SWR or antenna analyzer to the coax there? Or do you go outside, disconnect the coax to the antenna and hook up the analyzer there? Wouldn't it make sense to do it closer to the radio since that's what the radio is seeing or the other way at antenna connection? Um, thanks for your excellent YouTube videos and for your explanations we can understand. Well, thanks for writing in. That is a, that is a great question. There's very few times that I am going to connect an antenna directly to an analyzer other than maybe when I'm checking the SWR on like an HT antenna like the signal stick here you know because with an HT I am part of the antenna basically you're holding it you kind of are the the other half of the antenna if you will otherwise and and there's a few reasons here we're going to get into but the coax is part of the antenna system so it is of my opinion uh, that I would want the coax connected to the antenna when I'm checking it and I'm going to check the antenna's impedance at where it's going to connect to my radio. So for example, you can see I've got hanging up there a two meter roll up J pole that I built. And just to illustrate this, I connected my Rig Expert Stick Pro directly to the antenna and took some readings. So here is the first reading with me standing away from the antenna, I'm standing like right in that corner there, and this is what it looks like. I took another reading where I'm standing basically right next to the antenna, and this is what it looks like. Notice the two are different because my body is interacting with that antenna, making it look a little bit better. Now, let's go one step further. Here, I connected a length of roughly 18 or 20 uh, feet of RG316 coax. And I used this because it's pretty darn lossy at uh, VHF frequencies and higher. Took a reading here. Now look what happened. The SWR and it, where the resonant point went down because the coaxial cable is interacting with the antenna. So things change. I want to know what's happening where my radio is going to see the antenna. Now, I also hooked up a 50 foot length of Messi and Poloni uh, Potaflex 7 and ran it all through my house. It's going out into my living room, back into the, into the shack here and took a reading here. Notice now I get a reading that's a bit more flat across the band here. So your coax absolutely plays a part in the entire antenna system. So I would check it with uh, the with the coax connected. The other reason, when you start doing NFED half waves or dipoles or like any HF antenna, say you have a 40 meter dipole that's half wave up. How are you gonna check that SWR at the feed point? You're 20 meters up in the air, so roughly 66 feet what are you going to have a drone looking at your antenna analyzer? And then how are you going to manipulate the frequencies and stuff? It's just not practical. Other antennas like an NFED half wave, unless you're using a counterpoise wire, which most of us don't, we're relying on that coax to act as the counterpoise. That is the other half of the antenna. Same thing with, um, not necessarily the same thing, but with a Wolf River Coils antenna. If you were to check the SWR at the antenna, that would mean you're checking it while you are right next to that antenna, just like when I was right next to this two meter J pole. The uh, SWR curve and the impedance and everything is gonna look different when you're standing right next to that Wolf River coils than it is when you're even five or six feet away. 
The instructions for the Wolf River coils recommend being at least five feet away from the antenna before you take your reading. So it's physically impossible to take a reading with a Wolf River coils at the feed point unless you have something like the Rig Expert Stick Pro that has Bluetooth where you can do that. But still, the coax is acting as part of the antenna. So that's my take on it. Again, leave some comments. Like, electrical engineers, what say you? You know, give us some more. I'm just a guy that likes to experiment. I don't have any real science to back this up. I just know that I have a lot of antennas and I play with antennas and antenna analyzers a lot. So that's what my findings are. So thanks for writing a great question. I, I really liked that one. And guys, if you have a question for me, shoot me an email, k at mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again on another episode of Ham Radio Tube. 73, guys and girls. Ham Radio.